We are very uh, happy to uh, have uh, Professor Matthias Fink from uh, Longchamp Institute, and uh, there is a long name, uh, Ecole Supérieure de Physique et Chimie Industrielle de la Ville de Paris, <laughs> ESPCI Paris, okay, uh, to give us a talk on going from basic research to opening companies. And uh, as we all know, in Hong Kong today, in fact, all over the world, there is a strong push uh, for the code word called innovation, okay? Which means, you know, startup companies and entrepreneurship and all that. And so, uh, Professor Fink is the perfect example uh, of someone who succeeded in this. So Professor Matthias Fink got his PhD in solid state physics in 1970 from University of Paris. But then he did something very few people would do at that time. He went on to obtain a Doctor of Science degree in ultrasonic medical imaging. Now, <laughs> that's very unusual, especially in 1970. And, uh, and then uh, he um, went on uh, from success to success. And he's uh, currently a professor at uh, ESPCI, Paris Tech. And uh, in 1990, he founded the Wave and Acoustic Laboratory. And in 19209, became the Langevin Institute. And uh, today, the Langevin Institute has over 110 scientists engaged in research on waves and imaging. And uh, so his uh, is really, or, I mean, his accomplishment is really too long to read. Um, he has started many companies, and the four companies with close to 270 employees have been created from his research. And he holds more than 60 patents and has published more than 350 peer-reviewed papers. That's very impressive. So uh, Professor Fink is a member of French Academy of Science and the French Academy of Technologies. And uh, he was elected chair of technology Innovation at the Collage de France in 2008. Okay, so without further ado, <laughs> Professor Fink, please. Thank you. It is a pleasure to be here and to share with you some ideas and to tell you the story of how in my lab we have tried to transform a nice idea in physics in uh, products and in startup companies. And in, fa in fact, we are quite successful because today I would say we have more than 500, no, 350 people in the different startup. The, it is even more than what you say. And, and I, I will tell you the story, and it's interesting to see how things are going. Uh, it is very difficult to have success in this, but you have to accept to uh, yeah. first pro that it, is do it does not work. And you have to continue to continue till it begins to work. And this is very important uh, if you want to succeed in transforming really nice concepts in, uh, in products. I will begin first because I speak of time reversal physics. Time reversal, it's a magic word in physics. It is related to the problem of reversibility in physics and somewhere uh, the problem of time machine in physics. Uh, and there was many discussion about the euro of time where the Austrian physicist uh, Boltzmann tried to explain why when you begin from an order, a system of particles will automatically go to more disorder, and it's the concept of increasing entropy. And there were a lot of discussion about this, and Boltzmann was fired by many other physicists. The poor Boltzmann uh, suicide at the end of his life because he was so strongly attacked by uh, all, the all the other colleagues that he, 
he cannot uh, continue. And one of the guy uh, that was discussing with him was another Austrian physicist, Mr. Loschmidt. And Loschmidt was telling to Boltzmann, oh, it's crazy your idea that uh, you, you begin by order and at the end you are in full disorder. And, and uh, because Newton mechanics that describe the motion of particle is time reversal invariant. What did it mean? It means the following. If you have a set of particles going in all directions, after an explosion, for example, if you look where are all these particles at one time t1, and if you imagine that you have n particles and n demons, uh, that we call Loschmidt demons, that exactly measure the exact velocity and exact position of each particle at time t1, they can prepare a new state of the system, and if they perfectly reverse the velocity of each particle and send this at the time t2, all this trajectory of all these particles, even there was a lot of collision, must go in reverse time to give you back your initial packet of particles. Bon, this is, of course, uh, a nice uh, Gedanken experiment, that is very difficult to conduct. And in fact, at this, at this time, people does not know the problem of chaos, of nonlinear dynamic property. And of course, if you make any small error in the preparation of the system, you will never find back your system of particles if there is a big number of particles. This is pity because it will be a time machine for particles. Uh, if you go in this kind of time machine, perhaps all the particles of your body can be reversed and you can become very young. Uh, I try to do this, it, it does not work. But what interests me at this time was the fact that there are not only particles that are moving in space and time, there are also waves. And of course, in quantum mechanics, you associate to particular waves. But here, I don't speak of this kind of waves. I speak of classical wave. It can be acoustic wave. It can be electromagnetic wave. It can be water wave. It can be optical wave. In fact, the wave equation is also time reversal invariant. And this means that you can also try to build a time machine for waves. But in waves, you have something very interesting. You have a property of wave that tell you the knowledge of the wave field along a two-dimensional surface is enough to predict the field in three dimensions. That is to say, you don't need to know the field everywhere. You have just to measure the field in two dimensions. And with this, because of diffraction theorem, you can find the field everywhere in three, in three dimensions. This tells you that there is another solution to do time reversal than the Loschmidt solution that has to put uh, Loschmidt demands everywhere. You can just put Loschmidt demand for waves on the boundary of a system. It can be on a spatial boundary. A spatial boundary, sorry, a spatial boundary, uh, it can be this boundary where you put, for example, for acoustic wave, a lot of piezoelectric transducer. And in this case, you can do the following experiment. Imagine that you have a source of wave. It may be acoustic or electromagnetic. We will discuss this later. You send a wave from a source. I speak, I send a wave. Imagine that you have a medium where the sound velocity is very complex. The wave is completely distorted. And imagine that you measure on the boundary of the system the wave field with microphones. And microphones, each of them are connected to an electronic memories, and you record all the noise coming from this source on each microphone. It is signal in the time domain that you record. It is the pressure field that you have recorded. Now, once you have recorded this field, you can play time reversal. That is to say, you can take the each signal that you receive and reverse the chronology. What you receive first, now you send last. What you receive last, you send first. Now, if you reverse exactly the chronology, and if each microphone becomes a loudspeaker, which is possible when you have piezoelectric transducer, they can work both as receiver or transmitter. Now, you can transmit a wave. And this wave, because it is exactly matched uh, by sending the time reverse of what you have received here, this wave has no other solution because of time reversal symmetry to, to go backwards, like if time 
is going backwards. And you will see the wave exactly collapsing at the origin, whatever is the complexity of the medium. This is a very nice property of waves. If you can build such a time reversal machine, it will be nice, you can focus. Now one question was, if the, point, if the source was a point, did the wave collapse on a point? No, because a wave cannot stop. When the wave comes back on this point, it collapses, but after it diverges. And this is the origin of what is called diffraction limit. The focal spot that you will have cannot be smaller than half a wavelength. I will come back on this. And just to show you this, you can understand this here. When you send a converging wave from all directions, because it cannot stop, it collapses and it becomes diverging. And the wave, if it has some wavelength, at the collapse time, the converging and diverging wave give you uh, an interference, and it is the focal spot. The focal spot comes from the fact that in wave in our world, which is causal, you cannot create what is called an anti-causal green function. You can only create a beginning of an anti-causal green function, but after it collapses, and you have diffraction limit. Of course, if you can put at the origin here what we call the sink, uh, you can absorb all the energy and you will beat diffraction limit. I will not discuss of this, but this is something that I am developing here with Gongkung Ma to create what we call the acoustic sink that can absorb wave from all directions and that can beat diffraction limit. But all this is interesting. Now there is two problems. How many transducers you need? Uh, what happens when you have complex medium? And a fantastic story came when we have studied all this, is that the number of antenna you need can be very small if the medium where the wave propagates is very complex. And the number of antenna that you need can be even one if really you use what is called broadband signal with many frequencies, and if you go through structure which create a lot of eigen modes. And you will see that the kind of structure are the structure of every day complex structure, and we will come back on this later. Now, once I have told this, when we begin to work on this, we have not understand all, we just understand that we can build a time reversal mirror. And it was a very long time ago. I get this idea even in the 70s, but in the 70s there was no memories and no A to D converter to do the business. But in the 80s, 89, memory were coming, and we decided to find money to build a time reversal mirror. And at this time, I understand that the best idea to uh, found the money from the French system was to found a medical application. And I understand that lithotripsy, it's a field where you want to destroy kidney stone, it was a field that was growing, can be improved if you do time reversal. Because if you do time reversal, you can exactly create a wave field matched to a kidney stone to destroy it better. And I found the money to build this in my lab at this time. And the concept here was a little bit different. It was not a source that was sending a noise that you want to reverse. It was an object. The object is a kidney stone. A kidney stone is a target. It's what you can call a scatterer if it is small. And I imagine to use the, an array of piezoelectric transducer to send from one transducer uh, a short beam, you go through tissue, and uh, if, you have fat, if you have fat or muscle tissue can make aberrating medium where the sound velocity is complex, and you send a wave, if there is a, one target, the target gives you one echo, the echo comes back through this medium, and you record the echo on your electronics. And you can select with a window just a wave front coming from this target. You don't know where is the target. You just select this. And now you time reverse this. And automatically, you will send a beam that will go only on this target. This is a nice idea, but the target must be a point. And uh, it's not so easy to find points in nature. Now, if you have a medium which is more complex, if you, for example, have two targets, one big, one small, you send the first wave. You listen the echo. It's come very quickly at speed of ultrasound in tissue. When you have this, you time reverse this. Now you will send two beams, one going on the strong target, one on the weak target. 
And now if you listen to the new echo, the strong target is eliminated strongly, the weak weakly, and if the distance between the two targets is bigger than the focal spot of your system, after some iteration, the system go only on one target, the strongest one, the brightest one. And you have in your memory the exact wavefront need to destruct this target. And in fact, it can be fast. You, you have many targets you don't know. You send in, you listen, you, uh, uh, you do. And at the end, if you found an invariant, you know that you found one bright target. And now, poof, you put power. You multiply by one million the beam you send. And we have developed this system uh, in the IA90. Uh, it was an array of transducers here. We put this at the hospital, in different hospitals, in water, to have contact with, kidney, with patients that has kidney stone. And when you send a first beam, uh, if you look what are the echo coming from the kidney, there are echo from the tissue, but if there is a stone, the echo is much stronger, and you record a many signals that are all the echo from the structure. And if you iterate three times, after three times you find a nice spaghetti, and after the spaghetti is always the same, you have found an invariant, and it is just a bright spot on your kidney stone, and now you can put power. And we have developed this system, which was very nice, because 30 times per second, it was tracking a kidney stone, finding where it is, and building a wavefront exactly matched to the kidney stone. And we begin to work with a company, Technomed, but it was too expensive. In 90, to build a time reversal mirror with all this electronic, with many channels, it cost six times more than any little tripter that people used. And it was a nice idea, beautiful idea, but impossible to make a product with this. Too expensive in 90. And we were very disappointed. And we begin to say, oh, we have a time reversal mirror. What can we do uh, with a time reversal mirror? And we, we begin to look on aircraft engine. Can we look defect on aircraft engine? And we think also very nice things. But it was also very expensive compared to any other technique. And we have to wait before we, we make success. And we found that all this electronic that we built that was full of memory that you time reverse, that you, you play, can be used for something else. And we found that we can use this for medical imaging. In medical imaging, when you make ultrasonic image, you use an array of piezoelectric transducers, typically 256 transducers. And what you do, usually, you focus ultrasound in tissue on thin beams, and you listen the echo. And after you move the beam to make an image, beam by beam, uh, with ultrasonic transducer. And because the speed of ultrasound the velocity is nearly uniform, not always, when you have fat layer or muscle, it can change, but you can make images which are not too bad. And we decide to create an apparatus that will make image, but based on time reversal technology, not based on focus uh, in transmit and in receive mode. And we decide that all the steps that we describe here when you record what is coming from an object, the object can be uh, the body where you have sent the initial beam, Instead of doing this physically, we can do this in the computer. If we do just backpropagation inside a computer, and if you mimic the velocity of the medium, you will recreate back your object in the medium. And it was an idea to make uh, an image based on this concept, which is very close to holography. Except here, it is not sinusoidal wave, it is very short pulse, it is Broadway holography. In basic conventional imaging system, usually you focus somewhere, and after you make another beam, and you listen to the echo, and after you change the focus, and it takes typically some time to make an image. You can have 50 frames per second, typically, which is very nice. But now, if you use the time reversal technology, we understand very quickly that we can build a system that will be ultra fast. That is to say, we have just to send one plane wave in a medium, a piece of breast or liver, we listen all the echo, we put all this information in memories, and now we are doing the time reversal process in the computer. And it is time reversal in computer and back propagation. And now we can make an image. This is very fast to go through the medium and to come back. It's so fast that you can do this 10,000 times per second. And we develop this huge electronic at this time that allow us, by recording 
10,000 times per second all what is coming from tissue to make on, uh, offline after an image. But it was an ultra fast movie. And when we have done this, everybody was thinking we were crazy. It is not useful to see inside the body 10,000 frames per second. It's enough 100. And we say, no, it's very interesting. Why? Because the body uh, is a soft tissue. It's a soft solid where two kinds of waves can propagate. Compressional wave that everybody knows. And they go fast at a speed which is 1,500 meters per second. But there is also shear wave in the body. If I give a punch in the body, I will make my uh, body vibrating. And there will be shear wave that propagate in the body. And shear wave propagate only at low frequency. It is sonic wave. It is not ultrasound, because at ultrasonic frequency, shear wave are completely absorbed by viscosity. And what is interesting is that in the body, there are vibrations that propagate as shear wave. And they propagate at speed, which is between 1 and 20 meters per second. And if you can measure the speed of a shear wave everywhere, you have access to the shear modulus. And the shear modulus is something very important. It is what the doctor uh, is feeling when he's making palpation. When you try to see on the breast if there is a tumor, you are trying to measure the young modulus or the shear modulus. It's the same thing except a factor three. And you, you try to measure this. And now you can imagine if you have ultra fast imaging if by using ultrasound to make a movie of the shear wave that propagate in the body. You use one wave, the ultrasonic wave, which is compressional wave that go very fast, to make a movie of the slow wave. And we call this multi-wave approach. And this is very interesting. And the way to create shear wave, this is a very efficient way. It was the first company that we create, in fact. You will see it's a, such a success that it is nearly incredible, but it is not as strong as this. And there are other ways to create shear wave. You are creating continuously shear wave at low frequency by this two way. And you can also use what is called radiation ultrasonic force to create remotely seismic source in the body to create shear wave. All these techniques are interesting. And in my lab, in parallel to the time reversal technology that we were developing, we were thinking that shear wave can be very interesting to measure the elasticity of the body. And we begin by a very simple apparatus, that, uh, and we call this concept transient elastography. The idea was to give a small punch in, in front of your liver. By doing this small punch, you create shear wave. But you have also, at the same time, one small ultrasonic transducer here that can send ultra fast wave. And you can look how much tissue are moving. But it is not an image. It is just a global ID. One ultrasonic transducer allows you to measure the speed of a shear wave. And we have developed a very simple tool at this time with uh, two PhD and Laurent Sandrin decided to create a startup at this time. It was in 2000. And the name of the startup was EcoSense. And if you go in the hospital, if you have a liver problem in Hong Kong, everybody used the same apparatus, which is named the FibroScan. It gives you, it is not an image. You just put it on your liver. It gives you the mean elasticity of your liver. And it tells you how your fibrosis is evolving till a cirrhosis. And it's an apparatus which is sold everywhere in the world to detect all problems of liver. It is not an imaging apparatus. But it was the first company created by Laurent Sandrin in my lab, uh, which is now, in fact, a Chinese company because it was bought by Mongolia Pharmaceutical. And, uh, but it is uh, mainly in France and partly in China. Now, this was the first company that came from our lab just measuring shear wave with an ultrasonic wave, but just along one line. And now, because we develop at the same time in our lab this an array of transducers, where you have not one transducer ultrasonic, but 256, with a time reversal mirror technique, now we develop another apparatus and another company, Supersonic Imaging, that make this ultra-fast imaging system. But of course, to give a punch to create Shear wave, it's not very easy, especially when you have a big probe and you do not want to use this 
punch to create shear wave. You prefer to use radiation force. And we make this apparatus, which is based on a time reversal processor to make image, that gives you 10,000 frames per second. And if you look here, just what, what we call the phantom of tissue. It is a phantom of breast, where here you have an inclusion which is very hard. If you just look a classical ultrasonic image, like you have in all the hospital, you do not see anything. You just see some boundary, and the doctor can say, oh, there is something strange. But now, if instead of looking one image, you send a shear wave in the body, and you do ultra-fast movie. Here it's a movie, 20 millisecond movie. Let us look this movie. Let us look the motion of the shear wave. You see that the shear waves change its shape when it's going through the same medium. It is just the ultra-fast movie. And now you can measure at every point the velocity of a shear wave. And from this, you make this image. This image has nothing to do compared to the first image. It is an image of a shear modulus everywhere in tissue in kilopascal. And by going from an apparatus what was making 50 frames per second to an apparatus that do 10,000 frames per second, suddenly you see the movie of the shear wave. And, and this comes from the time reversal technology which is in this apparatus. And, and this apparatus, the Explorer, is a big success now. We, we have a company in France uh, and we have sold my, more than 2,000 uh, of these apparatus in the world. There are some of them in Hong Kong. And from this electronic, which was the first one that we put at the hospital, we go to this. And it's interesting because now, if you put the probe on breast, for example, you can measure the map of stiffness of tissue everywhere in the breast, see what is necrosis, what is hard, and you can do a lot of control and quantitative imaging of pathology. And for example, if you want to follow a chemotherapy, uh, by just making classical echographic image, you don't see anything, but now you can see day after day or months after months, how the stiffness of tissue change, and you can really control the efficiency of many uh, therapy. And you can apply this to many things, the liver, carotid. You can measure the stiffness of all kinds of tissue in real time. And this is a big application of time reversal technology to do this ultra-fast imaging. There is a lot of other things on ultra-fast imaging that I discussed yesterday on my talk, which was more specialized, how to improve this image, but I will not discuss more of this. In parallel to all this part, we decide to look other things. We decide that we want to know how many transducers we have to use, and what happens if we are making time reversal in medium where you have Boundaries, boundary that I call reflecting boundary. In a room, when I speak, there can be boundary. And we found this idea, if there is a source somewhere, if you have a small number of antenna, but if what you send from this point can reverberate in the medium in an ergodic way, it means that all this ray, after some time, reach the small number of transducers, you get a kind of information in all this in the time domain which is very rich. And now if you time reverse this, did this small number of transducers is enough to refocus with a limit lambda over two? And we begin to work on this. And we found that it was very interesting when you put boundary, you don't need to use many antenna. Just a small number is used is uh, need. And we push this at low scale in our lab. And our friend in underwater acoustic decide to try this in San Diego. And they built this huge time reversal mirror, which is completely soft, uh, 29 transducer working at sonic frequency with wavelength of 50 centimeter. And you put this in the sea. And in the sea, you have a lot of reverberation. You have a lot of the sound profile. The velocity profile is very complex. Waves are, go are completely distorted. And the experiment which was conducted, it's a very impressive experiment. It was conducted, in fact, not in America, but in Italy, near the Sackland Center. Uh, it is, you make a noise in the sea uh, here. And in fact, the distance between this source and this antenna is 10 kilometers. You don't see this here. Uh, you have 100 meter depth and 10 kilometers here. And now you send 
a small signal from one point. Listen the signal. You have seen? Boom. Now we listen what you receive far, at 10 kilometers. You receive all the reverberation uh, and you receive the signal. Now you take the signal, you send back in reverse. And you listen what come back at the origin. Your signal was short at the origin. Because of reverberation become very long in the time domain, you turn reverse it. It's, re it's refocused in the time domain, but it's refocused also in the spatial domain. It's focused exactly at the position where you were. And in fact, if you look more carefully, the size of the focal spot here, the size is 30 centimeters. That is to say, you are at 10 kilometers, the sound that you the sound that you send from this array of transducers, which is very complex, when it's, it is matched to the medium, and it's refocused on a point which is lambda over 2, wavelength was 50 centimeters, and it is recompressed in time. When you have this in mind, you understand that time reversal in very complex structure, if it remains stationary enough, can be used to do telecommunication. And in fact, what people begin to do, and there is a lot of group working on this, is to make underwater communication. Your underwater submarine make a small click. You record here on the basis long signal. You turn reverse. Now you receive a click. But now you want to send information to this guy. And now you, you because everything is linear, you can just make convolution by plus one, minus one, plus one. And the guy, only this guy will receive what you want. And as you see, there is application, and I will show you microwave application for wireless communication. But now, this is studied a lot, but not by our group. But in Japan, for example, there is a small vehicle that uh, till 1,000 kilometer distance use time reversal communication to exchange data. And it is much efficient because you have you match exactly all the propagation channel to get a very good signal to noise, and you can send much more data. And you will see that this is of interest for 5G, and Huawei is very interested by this technique now to develop this for wireless communication, not for underwater, but for wireless. But now there was another thing that we look in our lab. Is it possible to do a term reversal with only one antenna? Not 29, not 200, one. And we begin to play in cavities uh, that can be elastic cavity or any kind of cavity. And we begin to do the, say, the following experiment. You, give a, you create a, a short source of noise here, not noise, very short signal. And here, on one point, you record a very long signal. This long signal comes from all the rev reverberation in this cavity. In fact, your short pulse is broadband. It excites all the eigen modes of this cavity. And on point B, you record each of the eigen modes with some phase, and it gives you a very long signal. Now you can take just a part of this noise. Uh, and the time duration that we take is called the Heisenberg time of a cavity. It is a time where you are sure that all the eigen modes of a cavity are well separated. We take just this piece of noise. For everybody, it's noise. Now you reverse it. You turn reverse, and now you begin to give on point B, ting, 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 exactly this kind of noise that you send from point B. And you can make a movie of a surface wave that you create, and the surface wave exactly collapse at the origin and create a short pulse in a short amount of distance. You have a very nice uh, time reversal mirror working with only one antenna if you are in a chaotic cavity or if you are in a medium which is random enough to create uh, many eigen modes uh, that you can separate during one time. And from this, we do a lot of physics. People were very intriguing because if you play billiard in this cavity, in this billiard, it is a billiard which is very sensitive to any error. People call this ergodic billiard, but for waves, it's the contrary. It's a very interesting billiard uh, where waves can be time reversed very easily. Now, we decide to apply this to make a new company. In fact, it was the idea of one of my uh, researchers in the lab, Roskiri Ing, and the idea was the following. I have a table here, and I want to make this table a keyboard or even a, a tactile surface. How can I do this? 
a table is a kind of cavity. Imagine that you put just one small accelerometer on one part of a table, and now you come with, with your finger, and you make a noise, bing. And you record this noise here. This is what we call the green function uh, between point A and this point. Now, if we time reverse this signal, it will make the surface of the table moving. I will show you this after. Bon, okay. But it is not what we want to do here. What we want to do is the following. We take an object that we like, and at e every half wavelength, we give a punch, and we record on a memory all the green function coming from this medium. And we have a bank of green function. And now later, we can come back, and we can later give a punch, and make a comparison of the bank of data we have. And we make exactly mimicking of time reversal in the computer, because there is a theorem which is called spatial reciprocity. We can just look the signal we have and make convolution by the time reverse of each signal that we have in memories. And it will give you a peak when you are at the good point. And we develop these techniques. And till this, where you have just a piece of glass, there is nothing on the surface of a piece of glass. It is not the noise you are making by moving your finger, uh, and the system detects where you are. In fact, you don't need to learn all points. You just need to learn a small number of points on a line. And from this number of points, you have enough information to make a localization uh, point by point with a better resolution that have a wavelength. And you can follow. And in fact, our company, Sensitive Object, was bought by a big American company, Tyco. And now it's become Hello Touch. And when you have big uh, monitor, TV monitor, which are tactilized, they are tactilized by sound. On small size object, you don't need this technique. You can just put uh, electrostatic, uh, you can put sheet of uh, electrical or capacity that make your smartphone sensitive, but on big size, it costs too much, and the acoustic technique is the good one to make, uh, to make tactilization. Now, you can also do the contrary, not to find where is the noise, but you want to create haptic objects. Take a piece of glass and put a small number of transducers around this piece of glass, and learn the response of each point. And now you can do the following. You can decide. I hope it will work. I think it will never work. I am sure it does not. Ah, perhaps it will work. Oh, you, you can decide that you want to make in vibration some part of the object. And the, each of these eight transducers has in memory the wavefront that they have to send. And you have seen that oh, you can make moving. And, and now you can create haptic surface. You put your uh, hand on this object, and you can have a feeling of an object which is created. And it can be interesting. And there is a lot of work on this in France to create haptic surface, which are vibrating by time reversal technique. OK, now this is elastic wave, acoustic wave. Telecommunication, it's microwave. In telecommunication, you have the same problem. In telecommunication, when you send from your telephone short pulse of electromagnetic energy in the gigahertz range, in cities, in buildings, there is a lot of reverberation. And it is a, a huge problem that people try to solve by using what they called uh, MIMO technique, that use many antenna uh, to transmit, many to receive, and they play with this. And in fact, you can play time reversal also in rooms. You can put an antenna somewhere, send a short signal from a point here, receive a signal which becomes very long because of reverberation in rooms. And now if you time reverse from one antenna or from a group of antenna, when it comes back, it's recompressed in time and in space, and you can focus on lambda over two. And if you work typically in the, in the Wi-Fi range or wireless, you can focus on spot of 10 centimeters in rooms by using time reversal technique. The problem is that it costs a lot to do time reversal because you have signal at 2.4 gigahertz and you have sample them at 10 gigahertz. And you have to have ultra fast memories, ultra fast processing, and it's very expensive. And we make a company long time ago, time reversal communication, that tried to develop this. But it was so expensive, a new time, to do time reversal in gigahertz range, that our company was not so successful. 
And it is interesting for very wide, uh, wide band communication. And the principle is always the same. Uh, a telephone identifies himself in a room. You have a free antenna, for example. Typically, it's three people like this. You record the signal, you time reverse, it's come back on the antenna, and after you send information to this telephone, which make a channel that has select one point or two points where you want to focus. And, and we developed this, and uh, in fact, uh, it costs a lot because you need to work at 10 gigahertz, uh, at least for the sampling rate. And you can create electromagnetic spot where you send energy around the telephone, around two telephones, and uh, instead of sending uh, electromagnetic energy everywhere. And we were very happy with this, but it, was, it cost too much when we begin to do this. Today, it is no more the case. 5G communication is coming, and people want now to focus electromagnetic energy on each telephone. This is why time reversal technology now can come. And Huawei, for example, is very interested by this technique. But what we have done at this time was the following. Remember, when you focus, you focus on spot lambda over 2. Wavelength is 12 centimeters. Lambda is 6 centimeters. OK, you can send an information on an antenna on 6 centimeters. If you want to send another information to another antenna, it must be at at least six centimeters from the first one, because you don't want that the beam interfere with one with the other. And we decide to do some basic physics. Can we, by using time reversal technique, focus on spot much smaller than half the wavelength? The wavelength is 12 centimeters for Wi-Fi. Uh, can we focus on spot of three millimeter, two millimeter, because like this, we can send different information every three millimeter, uh, which is for the Shannon capacity, a big advantage. And we found that the concept of metamaterial, which is a material made of sub-wavelength resonator, it can be for electromagnetic wave, small sub-wavelength resonator, much smaller than, the, if you put a random distribution of this sub-wavelength resonator or a periodic distribution, if you build this in a smart way, it can be what we call a, convert, a converter of evanescent wave in propagative wave. That is to say, if your source is just an antenna which is here, very close from the, this distance is less than the wavelength, sorry. This is the wavelength. Now, the information you send from a point source contain what are called evanescent wave, but usually are tra remain close to your source and they don't go very far. But this object is a transformer of evanescent wave in propagative wave. And we record the propagative wave. You time reverse. And when the wave come back, they are again transformed in evanescent wave to give you super focal spot. And we begin to build crazy medium made of uh, copper wire, a lot of them in a random distribution. Each of them is a kind of sub-wavelength resonator. And we put this crazy medium on top of eight small antenna uh, for electromagnetic wave that, we, that are monopoles. And we put this medium. And suddenly, we transform uh, a small signal that is sent by one antenna surrounded by this forest of sub-wavelength resonator. When you receive it in the far field, even if you send a short pulse, just this small medium transforms this short pulse in a very long coda. We call this a coda. And now if you time reverse this signal, send back from this transducer, it refocuses back here in the time domain on the first antenna. But the size of the focal spot is no more lambda over 2, but lambda over 30 in this case. And you begin to create medium which are so complex at the sub-wavelength scale that when you use time reversal on such a medium, you can focus point by point on zone which may be lambda over 30, lambda. And this is not what is called negative refraction or negative refractive metamaterial. This is positive refractive metamaterial, but they use time reversal concept. And we develop this medium by making here a lot of sub-wavelength loop that are all together. And when you have this, if you use time reversal technique, you can send different information on this antenna, this antenna in parallel. And the distance between each of them is 4 millimeters instead of 6 centimeters. And we make our company, but the problem, uh, and the company get till 40 employees. Now it was bought by, 
bull, which become now Atos. And this technology is good only at this time for security, where you have this time reversal technique that costs a lot. But today, our company was nice, but without success, I will say, because uh, it was too expensive to put this on the market. But today, as I tell you, for 5G, many big companies are thinking to use the concept of time reversal for microwave. But we found another solution. This, is, this will be beautiful when the protocol will use time reversal between each antenna and, and the basis. You can have very well controlled uh, things. And of course, you have to track the guy. Uh, but you can send just to each telephone the good message and not spend your electronic energy electron everywhere. This technique is very interesting if you work with very broadband signal because you can send a lot of data. But if you want, if you work with narrow band signal, we found another ID that we push in another company whose name is Greenerway. Time reversal mirror, it was very nice. It is very interesting if you want to do broadband telecommunication because if the bandwidth is very large, you excite many eigen modes of the system and you will focus very nicely. But if the bandwidth is not so large, it's not so interesting. Now we decide that we can create something very nice that we call a tunable meta surface for narrowband communication. But narrowband communication is not bad. 50 megahertz, you can play with this. And the idea was very simple. You have your telephone here. Oh, you are not happy. The level of signal is very small. Why? Because the sum of all the electromagnetic wave that is coming on your telephone interfere in such a way that the signal is small. There is not enough signal. OK. But now imagine that you put on a wall a smart mirror for electromagnetic wave. Uh, and you look what well, the signal you have, and this mirror is made of small cells. Each of them, when they receive electromagnetic wave, can reflect it with plus one signal or minus one, just a two-state system. And the idea is the following. Imagine, for example, that you want to do Wi-Fi in the room. You have an antenna here an antenna there, and you want to have a good connection. If you are in a room, which is an ellipsoid, and if you put one antenna that emits at point A at a focus, and the other just at the other focus, you are sure that all what you emit will go there, and it's perfect. But it is difficult to live in ellipsoidal room. OK, now you have a room. Whatever is the room. But now you add on the spatial boundary of the room, a controllable meta surface that acts, in fact, for electromagnetic wave, like a surface where the impedance of each element can be changed. And it, when it changes, it is like the reflection coefficient ca, uh, from electromagnetic wave can go from plus one to minus one. And now you send a wave, and you want to have a maximization here. And you just change your su meta surface. And let us look here. You begin by a point where you put your antenna, and you want to focus there. And your meta surface is changing its shape, plus one, minus one, plus one. And you try to have an optimization algorithm. And at the end, all what you send, focus here. You have not made an ellipsoidal room, but the meta surface has done the job. They have put in phase all the signal that has to be added in phase to this point. And we begin to build this surface which this is for 2.4 gigahertz. Uh, every element is six centimeters, and each of them, when a wave is coming, can reverse the two polarization, or plus one, or minus one. And you can put this in the room, and you can play with an optimization algorithm that will make that all the waves coming from one point are going to another point, and you can play this. And here, you can look this movie, if it is working. You have an antenna here, you have your wall here. You have a kind of plus one, minus one, and you focus well, the signal is strong. Now you will move the antenna in a place where the signal is small. The system will learn exactly how to, well, it is not very fast here, but it can be very fast, and it's learn how to refocus all the electromagnetic energy. It is like you have a smart room where the wall are changing their property to make your goal. It may be to maximize the amplitude of electromagnetic, or to minimize. You can play one or the other. And 
we are pushing this, we have created this company Greener Wave with Geoffroy Le Rosé, and now we create the first mirror for at 5 gigahertz, which is the new Wi-Fi frequency, and the size is not so big. It, compared to my uh, uh, portable, it's the same size. You put this mirror, and uh, you have your telephone, which is not happy, and the mirror is making the job, and your telephone uh, receives 15 more dB, which is not bad, and you have a good communication. If you will put this kind of surface, uh, half a meter square, for example, in each room, you can divide by 10 the electromagnetic energy which is sent by all the antenna in the streets or in your Wi-Fi technique, where the routers send so much energy, it's a nightmare. You receive the signal from all the other buildings, it is a, you lose energy. If you add smart walls, uh, you can improve things. The same technology we try now to develop in Hong Kong with Guang Kong for sound wave. Uh, we have not completely uh, solved all the problem, but we have a panel, and if you send sound from some place, you want to destruct, for example, the sound it, it, at another place, the panel changes property. It's becoming hard and soft locally. You can change it, and up, oh, the sound is destroyed somewhere. You can create zone of silence or zone of hotspot of energy just by changing the boundary, the spatial boundary, uh, of your room locally. Now, this, this is a lot of potential uh, application for startup, uh, all this. Now, you remember, I tell you that I have begun by developing something for broken kidney stone, creating shockwave. It was too expensive at this time. And we, we lost this. And now we, we come back on this and we create a company, Cardia Wave, to make an apparatus that uses the reflect, the multiple reverberation in cavity to improve the spatial focusing, because it is now spatio-temporal focusing, which allow you to create with a small number of transducers a very sharp peak of energy that focuses spatially and temporally in a place. Spatio-temporal focusing is very important because you can send a lot of energy in the time domain, and all this energy is compressed in the time domain and in the spatial domain. And we are developing a technique to, for calcified chaotic valves to track uh, the calcification to soften this calcification by sending pulse and shock wave on it. It's a project which is not finished, but it's a nice project. Now, okay, let us, before the end of my talk, I speak of two kinds of wave, acoustic, ultrasound, and uh, wireless uh, electromagnetic wave. Optics, you can do also the same, except it is very difficult to work in the time domain in optics. But slowly, you can do this. And in our lab, people are doing what we call wavefront shaping uh, with broadband signal. And you have to use what are called spatial light modulator, and many of them. And we are working on this. But time reversal works also for water. And let us look this experiment in Sao Paulo, Brazil. You send a stone, the wave is going, and now you are in a reverberating cavity, a swimming pool. You will just record what happened along this dimension, and you wait two minutes that the wave uh, spread everywhere, and after two minutes, all the information you have measured here, you time reverse, and you send back from here, and you wait. And first, you want to see if it works with water wave. Water wave are, are wave that propagate at speed, but depend of gravity g, and of the how high is the swimming pool age. You can have dispersive wave, but here I speak of shallow water. And you wait two minutes to see even if there are nonlinearity in the swimming pool. Nonlinearity is not a problem for time reversal. Uh, only if you reach what is called the shock regime, and you. You, you wait, you wait, you wait. If everything is going, the stone must come back. Let us see if it's come back. If it's come back, you will find it's not really serious. But you wait. And after two minutes, which was the time needed, you see that something come from all the boundary, but exactly a refocus. Where was the stone? Well, it means that at least shock, uh, 
you can term reverse water wave. This is reversing water wave from the boundary. And you, you remember, I explained you, that there is this beautiful theorem in wave physics that tells you that if you know on a two-dimensional boundary the wave field, you can find the wave field in three dimensions. This is what we do in all these term reversal techniques. But at the same time, we understand that there are two boundaries in wave physics. When you work in wave physics, you work on four dimensions, three of space, one of time, space-time, very chic, relativity, space-time theory. Now there are two kinds of boundaries. There are boundaries in space, which are two-dimensional, but there are boundaries in time. What is a boundary in time? Can you make a boundary in time to create another way to do time reversal? And we found a very nice idea that if you have a medium where waves propagate at some speed, if suddenly, by magic, you change the velocity of the medium, the wave has everywhere to change instantaneously their velocity, you can create what we call a time discontinuity of the wave velocity. If you can create this, ah, the wave must make a revival. And we found a way to do this. We make a small swimming pool here, but we put this swimming pool on a big vibrator, vertical vibrator. And you know, the, speed, the velocity of water wave depends on gravity, G. How to change gravity? Uh, vertical acceleration, there is a principle in, uh, from Einstein that tells you that gravity and vertical acceleration, there is the equivalence theorem, it's the same. And what we say, we say that now we put an object, we send an object, we create waves, and suddenly, whoop, make a vertical acceleration. It is like you change gravity, g. If you change g, the velocity changes everywhere instantaneously. And we begin to play with this, and suddenly we change gravity, and we look what happens for a wave, and this is what we call a time boundary, where we make a discontinuity of the velocity in time. It is not a discontinuity in space, but in time. Let us look at the Eiffel Tower. Puff. An Eiffel Tower, and suddenly my small water tank, up, oh, I made this, and I see a wave that gives me an Eiffel Tower. Okay, it's not very nice, but look this, smiley. It sends a crazy wave, and suddenly you make just a vertical acceleration, and in the water bath, you see the object coming back. You create a time reverse wave. And now we understand, and there is a lot of very interesting physics in this, that when you have a medium where the refractive index of the medium, which means the velocity of wave somewhere, is changing instantaneously, if it is very fast, you create a time reverse wave. Now, if you modulate the property of your medium in time, it is like you create many small changes. Each of them, when one wave moves, creates some time reverse wave that come back. And it is like when you have a medium, imagine that you are an electron that tries to radiate electromagnetic energy. But at the same time, imagine that the refractive index of photons change because the universe is expanding. Your photon, one part is time reverse. And if you make calculation of what you can obtain, if you have a medium where the property of the medium are changing in time, when a particle tries to radiate a field, it receives a time reverse field that creates a stress on the particle. And the particle feels some, resi some resistance. And when we show this, this interests a lot some physicists that work on cosmology. They try to understand the origin of dark energy. Why the universe has turned, uh, is expanding much faster than what was initially things. And, and we work with a different groups, especially with a guy whose name is Ulf Leonard, on trying to explain some part of the inflation process as a medium where the refractive index of the universe has changed very quickly what happened to wave which was radiated during this process? Because one part of the wave at time reverse, and can we compute what is coming back? Well, this is just to tell you that we can do in water tank small experiments that mimic the origin of universe. It's not very <laughs> working very well yet, 
but by changing with changing of gravity very quickly things, you can mimic very crazy situations that were at the beginning of the universe. And, and we are looking to this. And uh, just to end, what is the next startup that we will create from our lab? Uh, the next startup, it, it will be with the guy, Roskiri Ing, that, where we create sensitive objects. We have this idea, you have seen, it's interesting, the vibration of the body, it's interesting. If you put probes, you can see inside the body what happened in, inside. But you have to put probe on the body. People don't like this. It must be a doctor that put the probe. Uh, it must be a radiologist that tell you what you have. Now, we decide to use the, the small ultrasonic sonar that are used in bumpers, in cars. In your cars, you have small ultrasonic sonar that send in air ultrasound at 40 kilohertz. And you know that it detects obstacles. It tells you, oh, stop to move, you park, uh, you have to park well. And, and these small sonar are very inexpensive. And you put 256 of them to create a panel. And this panel now, it's in air, it sends ultrasound in air. You put the panel at one meter from a guy. And now the panel is doing ultra fast ultrasound imaging. It does not do one 10,000 frames per second, because you have uh, the speed of sound is not as big in air than in water, but it can give you 1,000 frames per second. And if you put this panel in front of me, if I, you measure 1,000 times per second the echo of my body, you can make Doppler. That is to say, you can just measure the displacement field of my body. And when I am briefing, in front of this panel, even if I have a shirt, uh, sorry, I can, uh, I, I don't know if it will work. No, certainly today this will not work. Bon, you, you don't believe me, I am sorry. Okay, if you do this, not, you can measure typically one micron displacement when you use this panel. And when you are doing this, first when you are briefing, you see how the guy is briefing if it is symmetric or not symmetric, but you see also cardiac motion. You see perfectly the motion, and you see that there are waves that are going along the abdominal aorta, and you can follow them. That is to see, you can make a movie of the external vibration of any body. The panel is in front of a guy, and you are making a movie of how his breathing, how his cardiac motion is, how aortical uh, motion is. And we are just beginning uh, to do this, and uh, the apparatus it, it, uh, it is at the hospital in pneumology, because we can see if a guy is breathing symmetrically, not symmetrically, and it is a panel without, it is remote. The person even does not know that you are measuring this on him, is not stressed, and you can control both the, the breathing and the cardiac. And we think that this panel can be a, of big use to do telemedicine. You can buy this panel, put this in your bathroom, and every morning the panel will tell you, oh, you are breathing like this, uh, your cardiac is not so good, uh, be careful, now be quiet. And if you stay quiet, you can see if it's be become better and better. A and slowly, it can help you. And it is also a kind of measure of the stress of somebody, because the relation between the briefing uh, period and the cardiac period is strongly related to stress. It is a very simple tool that is an ultra-fast imaging technique that uses exactly the time reversal technique to make image in air of the vibration of a guy. Bon, it's not ready, and uh, I am sorry, uh, I have some movie, but they are not working. Just to conclude, uh, this is a research which is really multidisciplinary. The first idea was waves, time reversal, how to use this, and beginning to with waves which are easy to use, the ultrasound, it's relatively easy, after going to other kind of waves, playing between all of them, trying all, uh, all application, and of course, it does not work uh, systematically, you have a lot of problems, uh, but sometimes something works well. And, uh, 
the fact that we develop also this company, it allows us to have very nice electronics that are making by the company, and all this come back in the lab and help us to go to develop new ideas. And uh, we, we were lucky because time reversal is quite good for at least this kind of uh, uh, adventure. Thank you. Thank you, Matthias. It's a very interesting talk because I saw some student in my class uh, as this talk, and uh, I feel good that uh, I taught them some green function. <laughs> and uh, and you, as, you, as everybody can see, green function can make money. Exactly, <laughs> you can make money with green function. Yeah, yeah, this is a nice idea. <laughs> and in Hong Kong, it used to have a very famous saying. It's called high tech, high yet, low tech, low yet which means with high tech, you lose money. With low tech, you make money. But now, it's high tech, low year. Yeah? It's uh, green function, low year. So that's a very good lesson for all of us. <laughs> Time has changed. <laughs> so any uh, questions, comments uh, for this uh, very interesting talk? A lot is really based on the uh, uh, wave green function. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Green's function is important <laughs> yeah. in, in this talk. No question? Yes, uh, please. Yeah. I have a question. Yeah, if I understand correctly, this, uh, many of these applications are based on the, uh, uh, the assumption the sources are initial condition. So I want to know your comments on the time, de with the time dependent sources, the cases, and uh, that is a very important. One important problem, if I understand well, is did the medium is stationary, or, the, or you ask me, uh, what is the sensitivity to small change of your... Uh, uh, my question is, is uh, uh, for problems with uh, time-dependent sources, for example, the source is not just a pulse, it's just it's with, uh, for example, a single frequency uh, source. So for this kind of a problem, it seems that time reversal is uh, hard to uh, solve this problem. Yeah. Well, what is sure is that time reversal works better when the source sends short signal. Short signal, it means broadband signal. And it's more interesting to work with broadband signal, especially in complex environment, because if the environment has many eigen modes in your bandwidth, somewhere it is like you create many degrees of freedom that we call temporal degree of freedom. And so somewhere, what we found that the best situation to use time reversal was short excitation in complex environment. The two ingredients uh, push us to understand a concept that we call spatio-temporal degree of freedom of the waves. And in this case, you have much more spatial temporal degree of freedom, that is to say, you don't need to measure the field in many points in space, you can just measure in one or two points in space, but the time information will become rich enough. And you have a kind of information theory that tell you that how much information you can have in a wave field coming from an object, and this depends on the complexity of the environment where you are and on the bandwidth. Uh, and we, we design many theorems on this. Uh, and uh, our friend in mathematics uh, have also pushed many things uh, in the group of George Papa Nicolaou and uh, people like this to understand better uh, in random medium or what happened. But all this is related to uh, random medium or med complex medium at least. But I am not sure I have answered your, your question exactly, but uh, uh, no. <laughs> if not, let's thank the speaker again. Uh, 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 yes. I have a small question around. Um, as for your prediction, how many antenna do we uh, will need for the um, monitor of the human vibration? How many? Our uh, antenna do you need? How many, how do you say, uh, the, the receiver? How many well, in fact, we use 
256 uh, small sonars, and we record what we call the reflection matrix of a, of a guy very quickly. And with 256 uh, sonar, we, we can have enough information to make a map, like if you have something like 1,000 accelerometer on the body, but you have no accelerometer. I call this virtual accelerometer because it's only the, the way you measure things. And this is a nice tool because you don't need to put the accelerometer on the body. There is a field which is called cardioseismology, where they put accelerometer, but the accelerometer don't stay long. They have to glue them everywhere, and it is impossible to put 1,000 of them. And somewhere, uh, it tells you that the last machine I show you may be applied for many other things than the body. It can be applied to look the vibration of a plane from a certain distance. You can replace uh, the accelerometer that people are putting by just, of course, you need to have at least micron uh, uh, motion. But in this case, it's a nice tool that can have many applications for non-destructive testing, for vibration control, uh, which is a useful subject. Is it expensive? No. You know how much cost a small sonar that you use in the bumper? Uh, $0.1. It's not expensive. You can buy uh, it's tw $25 to, to get uh, 256 You buy this to Chinese company. It does not cost. A <laughs> After, you, you have to put all the electronic behind this, but it is a low frequency electronic. The main frequency is 40 kilohertz, and it is the electronic of sound card that you use in your, uh, to play, and you can put many of them. It does not cost a lot. Bon, et, and at the end, perhaps all this can be just an, a, small, uh, a small thing. Thank you. Yes. Have you thought about time reversal of diffusion? Is that a wave? Time reversal wave of diffusion, yeah. Wave equation is time reversal symmetric. Diffusion is no more reversible. It's a wave equation where you have a first order time derivative instead of a second order. This means that you have no, uh, if you play just time reversal in a diffusive medium, you will not recover your initial data. But somewhere there is the inverse problem that come, uh, and Gunther is one of the specialists of this. And in fact, even if you don't do time reversal that will allow you to backpropagate the diffusion process if you want, you can make an inverse problem to find when there is diffusion equation to find where are the source of, of uh, heat, for example. But it, you will not find the wavelength as the limit of uh, focusing. And uh, somewhere, if you want to time reverse a diffusion process, you have to, to replace the diffusion D in your medium by minus D during the inverse step. That is to say, you have to transform your medium in a medium that you cannot uh, create. Uh, but, but there is no time reversal symmetry. Uh, when you put red ink in water, you see the red ink spreading you never see the red ink coming back. This is diffusion equation. And it, there are some, something in hydrodynamics, in viscous media, where you can reverse the motion. But it's a very different, it is not diffusion equation that you reverse. It is just the Laplacian equation that you play in it. Uh, yeah, but uh, if we know how to reverse diffusion, uh, we know how to reverse billions of particle motion, which will be the challenge of Loschmidt, but we don't know how to do this. Okay, let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.